Hi, this is Carl Hose from Lincoln Electric, and today we're going to talk about welding 4130 chrome molly tubing. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of chrome molly. Today, we're going to be welding on tubing, which is less than an eighth of an inch thick, and uh, there'll be no preheat outside of room temperature required for what we're going to be doing. Typically, when we weld high strength tubing, thin wall tubing like this, it is, is gas, tungsten, arc welded together. You know, some industries might MIG weld it, but we're going to be TIG welding it today because your sanctioning bodies and a lot of your codes actually call for gas, tungsten, arc welding due to the quality of the weld. Um, when I TIG weld, I like to make sure I'm protected from ultraviolet light. Gas, tungsten, arc welding produces a significant amount of ultraviolet light. Uh, probably don't need a leather sleeve like this, but you definitely have to protect yourself from the light. Uh, gloves, dry gloves to insulate yourself from shock. I have a, uh, a Viking hood on here and I'm, I am running a shade of 10 or 11 lens in here. And we want to make sure we have adequate ventilation in the room for TIG welding. We're not going to create a whole lot of fume here, but we want to have adequate ventilation so that we're safe. The tubing I'm going to weld on today is an inch and a half OD 065 wall thickness tubing. Uh, it's only going to require about 65 amps and we're going to try a new machine on this today that we've just recently released and that's the new Square Wave TIG 200. It's an AC-DC TIG machine, runs on 230 single phase and it also runs on 110 current which allows me to take the machine to the jobs. The chrome molly tubing that we're using uh, is purchased, it's, it's produced hot and there's a scale on the outside, a surface on the outside. It's also been bandsaw cut so there's coolants and oil, oils on the inside, hydrocarbons and one thing about high strength steels, you don't want hydrogen getting into that steel. So oil is a source of hydrogen, so is mill scale. I always like to prepare the pieces by cleaning them with a solvent or, or hot soapy water and uh, use a little bit of emery cloth to remove that scale off the surface and get it down to penny bright. Some people don't do that, but I think when you have a vehicle that your safety depends on, uh, I want the best weld I can get. So uh, that's what we do here. We clean this all up. I re remove the scale off everything before we weld it. Fit up is real important. We have to have a good tight fit. We've notched this with a manual notcher. These parts here are actually done with a machine shop tool notcher. But we have a Y connection here and I have a T connection here. Once we get our fit up made, um, nice tight fit, we're going to put a few tacks on here. I'll probably tack in four places. And I'm going to use um, an air-cooled torch. And I have a, it's a 150 amp, 17 to style torch. This actually has a flex head, that's what comes with the machine. And I am using a different collet body than what comes with the machine. I'm using a gas lens collet body and a gas lens nozzle, which is a number six nozzle. The reason for the gas lens, it allows me to extend the tungsten a little bit further, get back in these corners. Uh, that's especially true with an acute angle where you have like a Y connection or a TKY connection. Uh, sometimes we need to extend that tungsten further to get back in there. Okay, I got everything fit up the way I want it fit. I'm going to start tacking here. I'm going to use a, a standard filler wire in the industry and that's an ADS-D2. When you make a single pass weld on chrome molly, you're going to pick up some alloy from the base metal and that single pass weld is going to be pretty close to a match of the strength of the base metal. We don't always have to match chrome molly on a TKY connection like this. So I'm going to use the ADS-D2 045 wire uh, to make the small tacks in four places. Turn that piece over. One more tack on the vertical. And we'll start to weld it up. I'm going to work from 9 o'clock up to the top, come around the other side from 3 o'clock, we'll flip the piece over. Sometimes you'd have to do this whole thing in position. We're not set up to do that here. Uh, as far as weld size goes, Aerospace calls for if you're only welding one side, aerospace code is one of the only codes we can follow. Uh, about a 332nd leg size on the weld back here on the, on the corner of this uh, where it's a fillet weld or a T-joint. And good full weld all the way through. Important that we get a full weld through the throat. We're only welding the outside of the tube, we can't weld on the inside. I'm running about 65 amps, I have 65 thousandths. I could probably run this hotter if I move a little quicker, but I'm going to leave it right at 65, take my time and work my way around here. Always feather the current off at the end, add a little extra filler metal so the crater is filled up. No concave craters could lead to a crack. 
Keep the gas on there until it cools down a little bit. So there you have it, it's all welded up. Uh, one thing I like to make sure with Chrome Molly is to get that bead washed in smooth. The interface between the weld and the base metal should be a smooth transition. No undercuts, no overlaps, no cold laps. Anything like that is going to, as I mentioned earlier, lead to fatigue cracking. I'd like to thank you for watching the Lincoln Electric Master Class from ARC Magazine.